Checkpoint has repeatedly asked for Social Housing Minister Paula Bennett to come on the program this week to address the emergency housing issue, if indeed there is one, and also to discuss the sale of a state house in Queenstown yesterday. A couple of things we wanted to discuss, the kind of emergency housing costs that we saw in Takanini earlier in the week, lots to talk about. That invitation has been declined four days in a row. Today she was visiting Queenstown as Associate Tourism Minister and our reporter based there, Peter Newport, managed to get to her and ask her if she believed there is a housing crisis. Well, look, for me, I've been worried about this situation since I've been the Social Housing Minister. Prime Minister gave a speech in January last year where we said that emergency housing was part of the bigger picture of where uh, we saw part of the problem. But actually, for me, I have to have fixes not just at, just at the emergency end, but along that kind of whole, whole pipeline through to social housing, through to affordable housing, through to more supply. So I'm not sure it is a lot worse right now, and um, I've been aware, acutely aware of it for a long period of time, hence a whole lot of the funding that we put in right from the beginning of last year and the most recent announcements. But there do seem to be dots that aren't connected. For example, the sale of the Housing New Zealand property in Queenstown yesterday. Housing New Zealand said there were two people on the waiting list. In reality, there were over 300 people looking for a roof over their heads. Well, no, they were 300 people that wanted to get into an affordable house and they had more of a rent-to-buy scheme. So, you know, what are they actually do an outstanding job, by the way, the, the Queenstown Lakes Community Trust. Um, I've been associated with them, we've helped them with funding in the past, so I think they're great. But what they've got is people that want to rent off them, save money towards buying a more affordable home, and I'm not surprised, in fact, I'm surprised they've only got 300. I would have thought they'd have more. As far as the numbers that need a social house and are on our waiting register, it is two or three. We don't need that house. Why wouldn't we sell it and then put it into some of the really acute areas that have certainly been on your radio station all week and I'm really aware of? But the stories are coming in every day of people living in cars and garages. Tauranga, Christchurch, Queenstown, Auckland. It does seem to be a national problem. Uh, certainly I reckon that you've got people that are getting into debt, that are getting them into situations. Landlords get to be a bit more picky. I've got to say, um, from a, a social housing perspective and housing New Zealand, we are less tolerable of um, inappropriate behaviour and violent behaviour. So we um, certainly are doing uh, kicking more people out than we used to. So, you know, I won't actually see staff being beaten up. No, we will not allow P to be smoked and manufactured in our houses and people will be kicked out. So, um, you know, I think that there are a range of things that are happening, um, but there are some people who most certainly are living in unsafe conditions that I'm not happy about and do not find tenable. Do you think it's time to accept that market forces aren't working in some Social engineering is required? What I will say at this time that we accepted is that there are people that are in social housing that shouldn't be there. So it is not a home for life. Actually, there are some people whose circumstances change, and I'm not sure we've got the right incentives in place to see people bettering their lives, moving out of these houses, and freeing them up for families that are in real dire straits because of a series of circumstances. Hence, we're doing tenancy reviews. You know, 672 people have moved on, more than 10% of them went, moved on to go and purchase their own home. That's why we do the housing support products, which is something new I introduced. So that means if someone's A, in real trouble, we're paying their rent, we'd rather help them at that point than have them move out and then us have to try and find them a social house. So we've put more than $1.5 million into that. So there's a whole series of things, let alone the rebuild that's going on within Housing New Zealand, which is literally nearly 600 houses that are already in construction and consented. Nevertheless, there is a building impression there is a national housing crisis and a social crisis. Is that something you deny? Well, I certainly wouldn't call it a, a crisis. You know, I think that we've always had people in need. Um, so the other uh, night on TV, I heard the homeless story was, you know, so the second in, and then the seventh story was a man who'd been 30 years living on the street. So that's decades. You know, for some people, it has been intergenerational. It is alcohol and drug. It is mental health issues. It's the huge, huge issues that you have to work with over a period of time. Um, so we're providing more for night shelters so that 
that we can put people up in those emergencies. But for me, it really, I know I get a bit of a bit of stick for saying pipeline, but it is. It's how do we then move them on to a more permanent home? How do we get aspirational for those young families? And there are some really good products out there that are working. It's just not a click of my fingers overnight. Do you personally want to do more? Oh, always. So I spend the bulk of my time on social housing issues and driving my department into seriously thinking about different ways that we can tackle this. Um, hence opening more money up to community housing providers so it's not just purely government. Um, you know, but when you're at 90, so when the Greens come out with a great policy, they're going to build 450 more. Well, where? So that means they're going to take the one house that's on the big section. So where are you going to put those people that are in that one house? You've then got a whole consenting programme to go through you're then hopefully going to be putting at least six on there, which by the way we're doing every week of, you know, of every month of this year and, and last and the one before, but there's actually a real process that you have to go through. You've got nimbyism, so the people next door are saying we don't want six social houses next to, it, next to us, so they make the consenting process hard. Um, you know, it is a, it, as I say, you've got to constantly be pulling a whole lot of levers, which we are. And what also gets me is it's not about the money. You know, if we, could, if we could give Housing New Zealand a heap of more money, they've still got consenting issues, they've still got to find temporary houses for those that have got to move out to then do the building programme. So it is a whole moving feast that we're trying to keep our hands on. And do you think on the basis of that just maybe one minister needs to take a leadership role, is that possible for you to do? Yeah, well I do. So I, I am the Minister of um, Social Housing and I by far take the leadership role on anything that's around social housing. Nick Smith does affordable and I think that's a great way with that building and housing and quite frankly Bill's more of our mentor that sits there and is trying to drive uh, you know, sort of better activity in the asset use of Housing New Zealand. But he would tell you that I take the lead on all of this and I think that's a 